Good morning from the most beautiful part of the Mexican jungle thus far. Chiapas has been absolutely breathtaking. We made it into a place where there's a lot more rain, which means a lot more green. And since we're in a tropical part of the country, it's a rainforest. We're also up in elevation. So last night was nice and cool. I slept so well. Yeah. There's howler monkeys, jaguars, anteaters. Of course, the dogs are helping keep all of those at bay, but it's pretty. Well, there's a howler monkey. They don't really make a lot of noise during the day. They seem to make their long, low growls at like 4.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. which wakes me up because I'm kind of a light sleeper. And that's great. I haven't heard them until this morning, except for right now. Whoa! I don't think Frank likes that. Frank is like ready to go find out what's going on. Before we get out of here, because we have a huge day planned, maybe we should show you around. Are you guys ready? Check this out. so beautiful being here. There's all these little hidden cenotes in the jungle that the villages around them have capitalized on. The entire village will take it over, cultivate it, build stuff around it, and then charge an entry fee. On one hand, it seems unfair that this costs money now, even though it's here naturally. But on the other hand, it totally supports the entire village. At the other cenote we were at, the little 13-year-old boy was working there with his entire family. Even though sometimes it feels a little touristy to have to pay an entry fee, the money really goes to a good cause. It goes to supporting these local and it's nice to know that there are people out here taking care of these beautiful wonders of the world. You hear those monkeys though? Yeah, they're pissed. I think they definitely woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I can see him. He's like jumping around in this tree right here. Really? You want to try to film him? Oh, never mind. That's a bird. To me, howler monkeys sound like inspiration for death metal screams. You put that noise to a guitar track, and you have a death metal song. I was a huge death metal fan. Can't you tell? Yeah, can you tell? <laughs> I think we'd moseyed around here and listened to howler monkeys for too long. Let's drive. Do you want a guide? Uh, How para un guide? In Spanish, it's $1,300. And in English? In English, it's $90. $90? Dollars. No, pe in pesos? Uh, no, dollars. Wow! Muy caro! These guys are trying to charge us 90 US dollars for a guided tour. A guided tour is definitely worth the money, but $90 is like four times as much as we've ever been quoted for a guided tour. I don't know if we're gonna end up doing that. Let's, let's check it out and see what they have to say. What was your name? Edgar. 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 Are you gonna be our tour? Yes. Tour guide? Yes, sir. All right. All right. I think we're in. Nice to meet you. Nice let's to do meet it, you. Edgar. Thanks. Thanks. We finally made it to our location for the day. It wasn't cheap and it wasn't easy to get here and it's extremely busy because it's the week of Easter. All the Mexicans have the whole week off so everyone's vacationing here, but we are at a very special location. We've been looking forward to this the entire trip. Look at this. This is Palenque. <laughs> Sunflower, you're the center of the universe. Oh no! <laughs> and you're connected to Mother Earth, my friend. According to the Mayan calendar, I'm the center of the universe <laughs> and a sunflower. Archaeologists consider Palenque the most artistic and elaborate site of all. Okay. No way the sun will ever shine through. Okay. The sun goes east west, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa! Get out of here. Oh, I wasn't using a mirror. Because we didn't have mirrors before the Spaniards. Right. I use that thing because it's shiny enough. Just like you can imagine, these walls had a lacquer on. They got it from tree saps and everything was paint. You will not believe me if I tell you Mayans practice yoga. I'll show you decorations 
In some of them, you see the fingers like mudras. Mm -hmm. In others, you see the legs crossed like lotus. In others, you see both. It's a symbol for the tree of life. Mayans didn't worship crosses like Jesus, but they worshiped like the tree of life. We're learning so much from having a guide. It's honestly so worth it. If you're ever in one of these areas, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's amazing how much went into planning and living in places like these. Water oh. blessing. Oh. Uno, dos, sure tres. Si. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice. <laughs> it feels different than when I do it to myself. Yeah. You don't know when you're going to pour it. Yeah. Right? It actually uh, cools you down pretty it significantly. Does. Very refreshing. It feels so good. Yeah. Old, old Mayan trick a little bit of freezing Whoa. stream water on the brain stem. Ready to go. There are about 8,000 high class people that lived here. 50,000 people just at the base of this entire compound. But I think we've spent a long time here at the ruins and it's getting really hot. It's yeah. like middle of the day, so. You know what that gotta, means. We gotta go find some water. Water time. <laughs> just got done here at the gas station, almost getting scammed or they're trying to scam me. It's one of the common things they do here. They tell you that the machine that runs credit cards is broken or not working or their internet is out and then they try to do like cash switcheroo games on you and things like that. So I just told the guy, look, all I have is the card, man. All I have is the card, you're gonna have to use the card. And he's like, the machine's broken, the machine's broken. Finally, he tried the machine, the machine worked. Yeah. And I, I got out and it said 300 on there. When you started pumping, I it said 300. Honestly, like, I pulled up on my Kaylee, you need to make sure you watch this guy. Entonces, esperamos, si, si, si. Okay, you're supposed to wait for the gas attendant to clear the pump before you start pumping. So it should be all zeros because they're, they are known to sometimes not clear the pump and just add on to whatever was already pumped. We know this, we normally look for zeros to clear before the gas attendant starts pumping gas. He didn't even gas. say zeros. He really? just said, he just pulled out that slip, he's like, you have to pay this and this. It doesn't make sense because he gave Jordan a receipt that says 2.45 p.m which was before we even arrived. Yeah. And then he gave, and, we, and he said, oh, the clock is a little bit off. I said, okay, fine, give us another receipt when it's done pumping fully. He gave us another receipt and it's the correct time. Yeah. So we know that this receipt is from before we arrived. ¿Quieres la máquina para esta? Sí. Para esta nota. That was really weird. We're back in the car now, we're back on the road. What we think happened is that the gas attendant did not clear the pump before he started pumping Jordan's gas. And so he gave Jordan the receipt from the person before to make Jordan pay an additional 300 pesos, which is something that we know to watch out for, but it's still just a little bit disconcerting when it happens to you. And you even have proof in the form of a receipt with a, a timestamp on it to tell the gas attendant, no, this isn't correct. And they just continue to argue back with you and they definitely have the upper hand because they're fluent, it's their language, it's their gas station, they're pretty much in control. We did what we could and we ended up not paying that first receipt. I guess I just feel bad for that guy. You never really know what his situation is, why he felt the need to rip someone off for an extra 300 pesos, what could be going on in his life that he needs that extra money. If it was simply the fact that we were American tourists and he felt like ripping us off, then that's one thing, but there's usually more to the story than that. I mean, like you guys just saw, they tried to tell me the card machine was broken because when you give them cash, a lot of times they'll give you incorrect change or they'll try to do like a bill switch on you, which makes it sound like we have this terrible impression of like Mexicans or people at the gas pumps, but these are legitimate things that take place at the gas pumps. And people that live here or people that frequently come to Mexico, they know to watch out for these things. And if you're new, you get taken advantage of. And it's just, uh, one of those things with, we gotta watch out for. That's all. Hopefully in the future we can just avoid those situations from happening altogether. But for now, we're moving past it. We're moving back on with our day. Man, we are really high up there. 
we're still climbing. We're still climbing. We're kind of riding along the tips of the mountain, which is cool. Look at this jungle, though. We are like seriously in the we are jungle. Literally in the jungle. You know, you're in the jungle when the palm trees are freaking enormous. It's about 5:15 here in the jungle, and the sun is just starting to creep a little bit lower in between the trees. It is beautiful. We're way up high in the mountain and we're actually heading to this really cool waterfall called Cascadas de Agua Azul. Waterfalls of blue water. It's a series of waterfalls where the water is extremely blue. My guess is probably from like tectonic activity underground that causes the water to be extremely clear or blue. But you can like even see it on Google Maps. Like when you look, the water that comes from this area is extremely turquoise colored in the satellite shots and even the rivers that follow below here are also like very blue turquoise. Even though it's about 515, it's still about 90 degrees out. So that water is gonna be wonderful. Coco frío, si, sí. mas grande coco frío, si, sí. me gustaría uno. Perfecto. Oh, look at that perfect hole. Oh my god. Nancy's gonna give you the meat. You want the meat, bro? Wow. Oh, this is the lady, dude. Muchas gracias. Perfecto. Oh Muchas gracias. Oh my. Wow. We got the meat. We got the meat. What a gal, dude. Yeah. Did you cut it off? Oh, oh my goodness. Muchas gracias. Gracias. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Muchas gracias, señora. <laughs> much nicer when you don't have to climb a tree for it. <laughs> so this is Semana Santa. It's actually Easter week and in the US we celebrate it by going to church, being with family, maybe there's like a hunting big, for eggs, hunting for chocolate. chocolate eggs, exactly. Here in Mexico the entire country basically gets the week off and it's Wednesday of Easter week. It's a party. It's a it party. is a party and we're out here at Agua Azul and they are having a major fiesta. Come check this out. That is how Mexicans celebrate Easter. Samantha Santa. Samana Santa. Samana Santa. It's the week of Santa, but it means Santa. Easter. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a strange translation, but that's what it means. We learned, a fun day today. We learned so much today. Yeah. Not just about Easter, not just about amazing waterfalls and cenotes, but about Palenque and the Mayan yeah. ruins. Probably one of the most eye-opening experiences we've had on this trip. It's crazy that for how far advanced the Mayan and the Aztec civilizations were, we were talking to our guide today, Edgar, and he was saying that pozole, the traditional soup. It's a spicy pork soup. Was originally made with human flesh. Of and it, their enemies. Of their enemies, they of their conquests. War, and then when they killed the enemies, they would gather up all the bodies and they would make pozole out of it. And it wasn't until the Spanish came and conquered them and converted them to Christianity and said, now that you've been enlightened, you can no longer consume human flesh. You need to pick a different meat. And so they picked pork because it was the most similar to human flesh. Yeah, so now pozole is made with pork, but it used <laughs> to be made with people. 
puts it into perspective that they were very far advanced, but they were also eating people. Yeah, like I said, eye-opening day. <laughs> yeah. We are definitely in the jungle now. Please make sure you hit the like button, like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to catch us tomorrow on the Nomadic Movements channel. Check out their vlog and subscribe to them as well. We'll Thank catch you guys. guys on the next one. Good night. Adios.